welcome you into the presence of the Lord and thank you who are joining us on Facebook and other mediums to share words of the Lord. I'm going to ask that you continue in prayer uh, for our state and local officials as well as those who are sick and shut in. A special blessing and prayer for uh, our family of the bereaved of Brother Dallas Bowman. Amen. Uh, continue to uh, work through this virus because God is still able oh, yeah. uh, to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the throne of glory. Today's lesson deals with faith and wisdom, and it's taken from James 1 1 through 1. It starts off with James not boasting who he is. But James saying, I'm a doulos, or a servant of the Lord Jesus. He was saying that he was a servant of God. Many folk would have led it out, well, I'm Jesus' uh, half-brother. Many folk would have led it with saying, I am a uh, leader of the church at Jerusalem. But James started off by saying, I'm a slave. <clears throat> I'm a servant of the Most High. Right. My Bible tells me if you want to be great, then you become a servant. And that the greatest person is the one who serves the most. Right. So St. James comes out again saying, not with a lot of shape, form, or fashion, but he comes out saying, I'm a servant of the Most High God. Yes, sir. And then he talks about brethren count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Mm -hmm. James knew something about temptation because, uh, again, uh, suffering and persecution first began at Jerusalem. And the persecution came because, again, the church at Jerusalem, rather than spread the gospel, had become huddled. Like many churches, they've been huddled and having church and going to meetings and having banquets and having annual days. But yet the mission of the church is to share the good news to the world. Yes, sir. And Jesus told them that you would leave here. You would be first witness in Judea, Samaria, and then of the utmost parts of the earth. Not in the church was in a huddle. Many times uh, the church is in a huddle, and God will send, uh, uh, he'll send a move that the church will come out of the huddle. James said, knowing that uh, the trying of your faith work in patience, faith will teach you how to wait on yes, the law. Yes, uh, sometimes all you can do as yes, a saint, yes, as a believer in Jesus yes, Christ, sir. is just wait on God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you, you, you know, one of the things about waiting on God is that you know God sees what you're going through. Yes, he knows what you're going through. Yes, and he promised never to leave us. Never. Yes, and never to leave us alone. Yes, patience. He said, but patience have a perfect work. Something about learning the way. Something about knowing that the Lord is going to make a way. Something about knowing that it won't always be like this. God is turning around in your faith. But let patient have perfect work that she may be perfect and entire wanted. Sometimes our faith has to be tested. All right, all right. First of all, it's tested so that others may see. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes people look at you and say, if, if it was me, I would have gave up a long time. Yeah. They'll come up and say, man, I don't know how you deal with what you deal with, how you go through what you're going through. You're still smiling and things are not well. But it's not me, but it's the God in me. God that keeps me. Along the way, but many times it's a testimony of the blessing of God. I'm, I'm leaning and depending on Him. One of the things we have to understand is that every faith has to be tested. Faith that has not been proved, that has not been tested, Lord have mercy, is not real, genuine faith. Yes, because sir. everybody yes, has to go through a test. If Jesus had to be tested, you have to be tested. Then right. James talking about, he talks about wisdom. Many men lack wisdom. Yeah. Let him ask from God that may give it to all men liberally and upbraid and not, and it shall not be given. One of the things many of us don't do is ask God's will as we pray. Many of us, we do, we treat God like a slot machine. We put some coins in We say, come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. We want him to meet seven, seven, and seven, or three chariots going across. And we want, Lord, do this for me. Do that for me. And give me this. But, but my Bible tells me in, in, in the model prayer, he said, not my will, not but thy will, will yes, be done yes, on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, 
Maybe we should pray, Lord, not what I want, but Lord, what is your will for my circumstances and what I'm going through? Yes, sir. Many times we needlessly ask for things that God's not going to give us because we're not in the will of God. One of the things we have to learn also, James says, we've got to ask in faith, not wavering. Many people don't understand that faith is the key building blocks for the Christian. We've got to learn to trust in God and to trust in God's word. Amen. God will do just what he said. Amen. He will do. And one of the things I like about this verse, he says, a double-minded man is unstable in his own mind. You know, wish you watch people. Pick what side you're on. Whose side you're going to be on. I, you know, some folks, they're, they're on whatever winning side. You know, they're not, they're not true fans. They're going to buy a jersey for whoever wins the Super Bowl. They're going to buy a jersey for whoever wins uh, 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 the NBA championship. But, you know, a true fan, you know, they got the same thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got it. I'm with a loop. Yes, sir. They're going to still be on the same. See, when I feel like a fish out of water, I'm a Viking fan. It's in Houston, so I just got to believe. Thanks, man, all the way. <laughs> Brothers, we've got to learn to trust and lean and depend on God. Not that he is a our weather queen. Yeah. We should rejoice yeah. when God lifts us up. Yeah. One of the things, we do a lot of things when God lifts us up. You want to say, whoa, whoa, look at me. But, but it's not me, but it's the God in me that allows me the opportunity to share the gospel. James so greatly says faith and wisdom. Sometimes you've got to know that what you're going through yeah. is merely a text. Yes, sir. It, it merely a test. You know, sometimes what the Lord used to test us, the devil uses to tempt us. But but when we come through the test, we'll have then a testimony. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
power. Every minute, every second, every hour of the day, it would never lose its power. The first song says, keep the faith, don't give up. It's only a test. Anybody know that God has given us many tests? And all you got to do is hold on to God's unchanging hand. We give God the glory and the praise to the God and Son, Jesus Christ, to our officers, to our minister, Pastor Joseph, amen, and to all who are here today. Thank you for your courage and your obedience to come out here on this day. We don't have too many things to thank God for those who we have, and we pray for those that could not make it because we know during the pandemic it is not, amen, easy. I'm speaking with my mask on, let everybody know that I do believe in being obedient that we ought to follow the instructions of our leaders. Uh, we are fussing about whether somebody can make you do something or not. We know people can't make us do some things, but it's just right to do the right thing and not to have people have to ask us, amen, to do something. Isn't that right? Because it's just the right thing to do. I come with thanksgiving for another week's journey yes, sir. that the Lord has brought us through. Yes, sir. Yes, and I'm sir. glad about it. Anybody else glad about yes, it with sir. me? I'm glad about it. I could be dead. Yes, sir. Sleeping in, in my, my grave. grave. Yes, sir. But God made old man devil behave. Amen. I want to thank God for that. Amen. I want to express my love and joy for all that are here and all the family of Fiesta passed by this morning giving out some Lord's Suppers. And for those who are amen, having it, we will have this after the sermon this morning. Uh, we thank God for those who sacrifice to come and get it. And we still have it here for you if you need it. Uh, I want to share condolences with the family of the Bowman, Blaylock family. Uh, we lost our wonderful brother, uh, good friend, servant of the Lord. He did a wonderful job. We call him Jack Rabbit. And we surely miss his presence. And it will be missed. We thank God for his wonderful son who carried over the service on that day and did a wonderful job and had such encouraging words for the Fiesta family, how we loved him. But we share with you that the love was returned to us. He loved us as well as he we, we loved him. that God will bless you in your strength. We're also praying for the family of Brother Ed Zilton, close friend of my son, uh, passed away this weekend, and uh, uh, we pray for the wife and the children and for all the family and friends. We, that's another beautiful spirit that we're going to miss along in this world. We know that the pandemic is taking its course and that uh, we see that they are going up, amen, but share with you that, that there are some protections and there are some things that will hinder you if you go the wrong way with it. I listen to the voices of our medical experiences that uh, have been proven. There are some that in the medical field that really haven't been proven. And you want to watch what voice you listen to. Yes, sir. There are some that don't know yes, what sir. they're talking about, and I would not listen or prove some of them, but some have been proven, and I say to you, listen to the proven voices that have a man made a difference in his past day. I do believe that God has a remedy coming for us, just a matter of time, but we need to what, wait on the law. Right. It's only a test. Mm. It's only, it's only a, a test. Yes, sir. This too shall yes, pass. Y'all believe that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am very encouraged. This week was a great journey. Uh, even though we lost them along the way, those of us who lost, we know that they're not lost and we didn't lose them. They went on to be with the Lord. They're in a better place, a place of uh, no pain, no heartache, no more crying, and no more dying. So they're in a better place. And even though we're going to miss them, we know that God's will is what should happen. So without further delay, I want to thank Pastor Joseph for that beautiful uh, uh, teaching on opening on the uh, uh, Sunday school. He did a beautiful job. Please don't forget to uh, do your tithes and your offering and your uh, Sunday school. And this is first Sunday for all our villages. Please don't forget. I want to thank those who gave so wonderfully for the church anniversary 
pastor that life anniversary. We thank God for you who remember and did not forget. And we pray that God continue to bless. And I pray for all the churches and all families. Do not forget your church. Keep supporting the church and please support your pastor. Uh, he, he, he's in a serious situation now too. Amen. You need to support him. Amen. Much as you can. It would be a blessing. Amen. Our scripture today for our teaching and in this setting that I do now, I do more teaching than preaching, and sometimes, amen, I just have to go with the Spirit, but I do believe that teaching is very important during this day and time for people to know and understand that God is still in charge. God has the power, isn't that right? Amen. He's the one that has overcome, so if he's overcoming, he tells us that we can overcome too, because he has, isn't that right? Amen. Chapter 16 of the Gospel of St. John is a very wonderful setting there. Chapter 16, starting with verse 1 through verse 5, and then we go to verse 27 through verse 33. There are some other parts of that that I will share, but I pray with you that we go from there. And every time we have to go to preach a sermon, we will pray that you will go home and read that sermon because God has some special revelation for you. Even though he gave us some special revelation, he has some gifts for you that will help you along this amen, setting the trial that you're going through. Verses 1 through 5 of chapter 16 and then verses 27 through 33. It says, These things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogue. Yet a time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. Isn't that something? And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the, at the beginning because I was with you. I didn't say it because I was with you. Now change is going to come. Yes, huh? Yes, First five said, but now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you ask me a question. None of you ask me whether goest thou. Let's go to verse 27, and we'll get to that question part of it that later. It says, verse 27 says, for the Father himself loved you because ye have loved me and have believed that I came from our, from God. I came forth from the Father and come into the world again. I leave the world and I go to the Father. All right. I'm going to read that verse 28 again. Say, I came from the Father and have come into the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. Yeah, right. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest from God. Thou camest forth from God. Right. Jesus said to them, Do ye now believe? Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, it is now come, that ye shall be scattered every man to his own, and shall leave me alone, yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye have tribulation. Yeah. But be of good courage. Yeah. I have overcome the world. We want to talk about the real overcomer. Yeah. Right. Amen. The, the real overcomer. The one who has been through something before us. The real overcomer. Thank you for all who respected God's word, for all who hear God's word, and all who want to hear a revelation from God. It is coming through the word of God, not through Pastor Como, so if God uses me, but the word itself will give you revelation. Even if you read it, it will give you some. Amen. So they are the real overcomer, the one who go through, have been through trials until they're before us. And I can listen to somebody that has been through something before yes, me. Sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Before I was a war veteran, I listened to the old war veteran. Amen. And when before I even got into service, I, I was I talked to some of my families and friends that had been in the war. And when I got drafted, I surely went and met them, some of the older ones, and talked to them. I had a brother in the church of Mount Calvary who had went before me 
amen, to, to the war. And it was a blessing because he sent the, the church back a letter and shared with how the circumstances was here with him and how they put a gun in his hand and something that he didn't really want to do. But some things you don't want to do. Yes, sir. But you don't have no choice but to do. Yes, sir. It's called survival. Amen. And because he sent that letter, because the pastor shared it with the whole church, and because I got to meet him and see him and talk to him myself, I felt encouraged because he blessed my life to have courage. He said, when you go out there, amen, no matter how scared you are, don't be scared. He said, he said, no matter how scared you are, don't be scared. And, he, and I said, well, how do you do that? But he said, remember what you've been trained to do. Do what you've been trained to do. Yes, sir. And, 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 and we are war veterans right here in Fiesta. Amen. And there's a pandemic. There's, there's a war going on. Satan would love to try to break us yes, down. Sir. Yes, sir. But remember yes, sir. what you've been taught. That's yes, not just Fiesta. That's every church opening God's name and believe in the name of Jesus. Don't forget what you've been taught. Don't forget what you've been trained to do. Yes, sir. God is still a good God. Yeah. God is yeah. still on the throne. Yeah. And let me tell you something. This too will pass. We talked about it. We shared it. Amen. This too shall pass. Seems like it's not going to ever go away. But this too shall pass. And we are overcomers. If you have overcome anything already in your life, you know what an overcomer is. Isn't that right? God has blessed us and given us all we need to overcome the situations in our life. And we thank God for leaders and those of the past that have blessed us in John Lewis. And we had his going away the other day in the family. We prayed for the family. But he was a great example and still is because what he taught us will last. Amen. This shall be there. Amen. For us. I'll share with you that. Amen. Uh, John in this John's gospel. Amen. There's a question to ask sometimes. Why did God's son come to earth? And John Gospel has the answer. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's John 3.16. Everybody knows that, all right? John's writing are designed to convince people to believe in Jesus as God in him Form into and has formed life as a result, amen, of his sacrifice. Uh -huh. Reflect on the one who once lived among people like us and renew your trust that he will give you life to the fullest. He will give you life to the fullest. Who, who best can tell you about his experience than the one that experienced this with the, with the Savior himself? John talks about Jesus, God's word made flesh, who came to dwell among us. The incarnation of Jesus allows us to experience God up close in person. Through him, through his human presence, we see how God loves his enemy. We see God's compassion for hunger. We see God's sorrow over a sinner who won't repent. Because Jesus came and sent another comfort. We are able to experience God's love and present through the Holy Spirit, a continuous and indwelling reminder of the person and nature of God. You really learn to know who God is, amen, and what he comes for. The life God has amen, blessed us with a beautiful life. He also blessed us with some help. He blessed us with a comforter that will bless our life. Life is structured in such a way that our entrance into the world happens without, amen, our consent. We don't have no choice. Amen. Children don't have no choice. When we think about that, I think about it all the time, how people, and that was a young man just the other day, beat his poor child, killed him. Mm. Isn't that horrible? That flesh that comes from your flesh. Yeah. How could you do such a thing? And when I hear of things like that, I thank God for my parents. Yes, sir. I thank God for my sisters and my brothers and all around me that loved me so much they wouldn't hurt me or batter me. Amen. Come on. A child grows up and you are their security. You are the one they look up to. Amen. They come to you and they run to you. Amen. Now I have my children running to me. Now I have my grandchildren running to me. As soon as my granddaughter comes in the house, she comes running to grandpa. Amen. And I expect that. If I know she's coming, I even see her pull out. I know as soon as she's going to bust through that door, come running, hollering, grandpa, grandpa. 
and I expect to have my arms wide open. And one thing she'll remember about her grandpa, if I never get to see a rose, here, grandpa had his arms wide open. Yeah. yeah. Waiting for me to come. Yes, come on, somebody. Yes, and that's what a child ought to remember. Amen. A child should not have to remember abuse mm. and misuse. Isn't that right? Likewise, the timing of our departure, amen, as we it is fixed without our input. Indeed, the appointment with death is one we all must keep, one for which we shall not be late. Huh? We must all keep the appointment for what? Death. It's upon the man wants to what? Die. Die. Then, amen, you're going to have to answer for what you live. Isn't that right? Amen. You can't be late for your funeral. Similarly, the physician, after attending to someone very sick, turns to the closest family member and says, Faith, he's quite ill. He will not get over this. So it is that on that day that our birth, and one might also appear into our crib and quite accurately declare he would not get over this. You look at a child in a bed born into a world of disaster, say he will not get over this. And it's amazing, some challenges I've seen in the, in the, on, on TV where some children have come through some great challenges. They say they wouldn't live, and amen, they wouldn't make it for a few months, and it wouldn't last to be two or three years old, and they make it to be grown, amen, and a blessed. That's God, amen, in his way of doing these things, that he know how to work it out. Isn't that right? Amen. As we looked at this gospel of St. John in chapter 15, amen, Jesus is getting his disciples prepared. Anybody know that you have to be prepared? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And God prepares us even though we don't believe it. For all the trouble that come our way. Amen. Uh, the Apostle Paul say, I've learned to be content. And the more that I study God's word, the more that I be in God's word, I've learned to be content. I've learned how to appreciate my own better. I've learned how to appreciate my family better. I've learned how to appreciate my friends better. Just the other night, last night we were talking a friend from Louisiana Lake Church called what we called and talk, amen, and it brought back great memories of some of our friends that we grew up with. Some are gone. Some are still here. I'm grateful even just to hear their voice. Now, I can't see them, but I can hear their voice. Yes, sir. And now, now, we, we, we sort of take some things for granted. Uh -huh. Amen? You can just, just go and just see somebody. When you get ready, you just go and see somebody. Hey, but now, it's not that easy. Yes, sir. You yes, got to be able to cap across from some state line. Amen. The different states got different rules. When you go across that one line, you might not get back over on the other side. <laughs> amen. And when you do, you might have to go through some changes. <laughs> so therefore, amen, Jesus is getting them prepared. There's some changes coming. Jesus is saying, you need to prepare yourself for it. Amen. When you know something is coming, it's no problem to pass. He said, because, amen, I'm ready. I've accepted. When I knew I was going to Vietnam, I was going to the war, I prepared myself. And I told my mother, may, I may not make it back, mom. But if I do, if I do, I say one thing I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be trying to make it back. I'm not gonna get out there and give up. Yes, sir. I'm not gonna get out there and get in some trials until they look like I'm amen in the best way. I can't get out. I'm gonna always believe in fighting my way out. Amen. amen. Brother Bowman, who is gone and has, has left this world, but he got shot, he got injured in the Vietnam War. He still didn't give up, he still didn't quit. Amen. He still amen, made it through life. He didn't come out with no excuses, he made it through life. Jesus, amen, prepared his disciples, amen, the ones he trained and he taught for three years, amen. He says in verse 1, these things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. Just because you're a child of God don't mean you're not going to suffer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Just because you followed Jesus for the last three years don't mean you're out of trouble. No, no, no. I'm going to get in some trouble, Jesus said, and you too. Huh? We all going to get in some trouble. What I used to like about the fact is that when one got in trouble, all the rest of them pissed in too. Yeah, yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. Uh, you never felt alone. When some of my family, my, my children, the mother, man, they, they're in trouble, I'm going to be there for them. My friends, I'm going to be there for them. I'm not going to leave them stranded in that situation. All right. I'm going to be there for my family and my friends and for, even for the strangers. If I see them in trouble and I know it's something they got into, that they can't get themselves out. Here am I. Come on, you, you get that? Here am I. I may not have all that I need, but I have enough to help them. Yes, sir. And if you have enough to help somebody, give them a bottle of water, give them a little bit of food, something to help somebody. People are losing their jobs. They're losing their, their houses, their rent. I mean, things are bad. 
And if I have just a little food to offer somebody, if I have, a, amen, a little corn or two to offer them, I really offer them to them. Now, I'm more susceptible to give to somebody on the street. Uh -huh. Come on, somebody. All right. All right. When, when I was not at one time, now I'm a little more susceptible to give to somebody on the street. Amen? amen. Because, amen, some are going to be out there that really, amen, had no choice. Isn't that right? Amen. Jesus said, don't be offended. Don't be offended because you think you're a child of God and you, you're not going to have another, you'll get in trouble. Don't be offended. Because remember, don't forget, he said, Lo, I'll be with you. All the oh, So don't, don't matter what you're going through, I'm going to be with you. Then Jesus said, These shall, They shall put you out of the synagogue. Yeah, and a time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think he doeth God service. He doeth God a favor. They're going to put you out and say, I look at, you know, people, and, and, and many people complained for years about every church being on the corner. Y'all remember that? Yeah. They talked about the smaller church. That kind of is so small, y'all just go on and pitch in with the bigger church. Now, small and big, come on, somebody. <laughs> just about all of them shut down. Yes, sir. Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. Ain't none of them at 100% now. Yes, sir. Ain't none of them at 50% now. Amen. It's a bad situation now. Amen. That people can't talk about it. Amen. Now put us out. Now the enemy, the devil, is somewhat has put us out. Come on, somebody. Right. Through this pandemic, through this, amen, virus, he has put us out. We can't have church like we used to have. Yes, sir. We, we can't sing with one another like we used to sing. Uh -huh. We can't pray with one another like we used to pray. But I got news for you. Amen. The devil don't stop nothing. That's why they gave us TV. That's why they gave us Facebook. That's why they gave us YouTube. That's why they gave us ways that we can still praise God. We can still pray with one another. We can still have a voice with one another. We can still lift him up. And they say, Lord, I'll be lifted up. I'll draw. Come on. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Unto me. So don't stop. They may put you out in the Bible. may put you back and set you back a bit. But don't never stop praising God. It's real sad when somebody believes they kill you, they take your life. Now, the word kill is the, the symbolic of of taking a life. You take away somebody's life when you take off, take everything they have. And that's about the situation about the, they're taking the government checks away. They're taking, come on. Uh, they're taking everything. They, they don't even want to give the stimulus check. Uh -huh. Amen. They, and they're taking and putting them out of their home. They're taking things away from people. Yes. And I got, a, I got a voice for you today. They may take something from you, but they can't take God from you. They can't take Jesus yes, from you. Yes, Hold on yes, to his unchanging hand. God will make a way if you hold on to God's unchanging hand. Amen. Yeah, they'll kill you. They'll kill your spirit. They'll kill everything in your life, but they can't take Jesus away. Remember that. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. Why they do it? They have a good excuse. They just don't know. They're, they're what they call ignorant. And it, and it has no, ignorant, the word ignorance here don't have no uh, time to race, creed, or color. They're all yes, ignorant. Yes, Amen? Amen? White, Spanish, black. Amen? All ignorant. To the fact, amen, that they will take things away uh, from you. Isn't that right? They, they don't know the Father. They don't know Jesus, so they will take things away from you. Yes, sir. I don't know about you, but my heart, I can't stand to see them. My, my mother was the same way. And Pastor Bill's mother was the same way. Uh, can't stand to see nobody suffer. That's why we ended up in our home with a whole lot of people. I ended up with some additional brothers and sisters. Uh -huh. Amen. My clothes were being used. And, and uh, before, before, Mama took him in. And she said, well, he might need some help with your clothes. But when if you share that with him, I'm going to buy you some more. And my dad told me. She talked to my dad, and my dad said, okay, son, you, you share with them, and my daddy going to take care of you later. Amen. In other words, you got a, you got a blessing coming. And, and this is the same way with Jesus. All right. If you share with somebody else, All right. I'm going to give up. Uh -huh. Come on. Some of your value. Yes, God going to give you something more valuable yes. than what you have. Yes, or somebody catch that for a while. Am I right? Yes, uh -huh. Yeah. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you. In other words, it's not something coming by surprise. I told you this was coming. Amen? And it ain't new to you that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I say not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. 
You had nothing to worry about. Also, while I was with you, I was training you. While I was with you, I was teaching you. While I was with you, you saw God with me. And then I tell you, as I get ready to go, I'm going to leave you something yes, that God will always, always be with you. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he said, I was with you in the beginning. Yes, yeah. I was with you there. You had no words and no comfort. Let me tell you something, children. Yeah. When you got parents, amen, and you have to worry about daddy going to work and the mama take care of the house. She cooking all that. You ain't got nothing to worry about. You go in the house, you lay it down. Amen. You don't have nothing to worry about. Amen. I said, look behind you, son. Amen. Look behind you. Amen. You don't have nothing to worry about. Amen. God, amen, had your back through your parents. Yeah. He gave you good parents. They provide food. Amen. They provide clothes. They provide shelter yeah. over your head. Huh? God provides. Yeah. And therefore, I have nothing to worry about. Isn't that right? But I share with you that, man, you say, now I'm finna go. I'm finna, go. I'm finna take off. I'm finna leave you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Now, uh, where you gonna stay? Huh. Now, the key to it is not like he ain't left you nothing. The key to it is not like he ain't taught you nothing. And, and to children, amen, on a growing up, you get to a maturity age, that's the time you got to cut it loose. Yes, sir. Come on, somebody, yes, ain't that right? Sir. You can't keep taking care of a 40-year-old child coming to day your baby. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Uh, they get up at that 20, 30 years old, they need to learn something of them. They need to learn how to take care of themselves. Yeah. Jesus says, come on a time now, you have to take care of yourself. Amen? amen. You're going to have some trouble talking to them because you even know me. You're going to have some trouble. You call on my name, you're going to have some trouble. Yeah. But lo, I'll be with you always. Isn't that right? Amen. I, I said this thing to you. I, I let you know that it's coming. But something else is coming. Verse 5, I say, but now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you asking me whether goest thou. And then in verse 7, I had to put that in there because I got this extra cool with that. He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go away, not away, the comforter will not come into you. Uh -huh. But I depart, and I will send him unto you. Amen. I'm going away. Yes, sir. But I'm going to send you some. I'm going away, but I got you some backup. Come on, somebody, right? Amen. Here, here, Jesus saying and presenting the comforter to his disciples. All right. Say, Christ said, I'm going away. I'm going away in order that you might have some more help. Yeah. I'm going away in order to might have the kind of help you really need. Yeah. And sometimes children don't understand that, amen. You've got to learn something on your own. Yeah. God will be with you. You gotta learn, you gotta learn that for yourself. My mother told me that God's gonna be with you. I'm going to be a damn mother said, and daddy, God's gonna be with you. I, I don't know what you were talking about. But when I got into those circumstances where Charlie was after me, where he was shooting at me and putting a pass in by my head, and others were getting blown up and others were getting shot. Amen. And I was still alive. I said, God is with me. Yes, sir. Who else could it be that would bring me back yes, but, God. but God? Somebody know what I'm talking about. Isn't it right? Yes, so therefore, Jesus told them, I got to go. In order, there are two things you're going to you have going. But if I go, amen, if I go, amen, if, he said, First of all, if I go not away, the comforter will not come. And if I don't go away, the comforter, which is the other the, the third party, which needs to come. It started with the first party, which was God. Yeah. Started from the garden. Started from Adam and Eve. Amen. Then, amen, Jesus came. Yes, sir. Now is the dispensation of the third party that God said, I got you some help. Yeah. Amen. And Jesus said, I'm going to be with my father. And you don't need me here no more. Yes, sir. I got you some help that, Lord, I'll be with you all through the God, the Father, and the Son. We're going to be with you because the Holy Spirit is going to lead and guide you. Yeah. The presence of Christ. Spirit in the church is more desirable than bodily presence. The presence of Christ's spirit in the church is more, imp more important and more desirable than bodily presence. Yes, sir. Jesus said, my being here gave you comfort, yeah. but my going will give you more comfort because I'm going to leave you something that's going to stick with you. Amen? But I got to go. Mm. Amen? But 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 the spirit is better than bodily presence. Y'all right. gonna catch that, huh? The spirit shall come convince the world of sin by conviction. Amen. The spirit was sent to convict sinners right. of sin. The spirit has its purpose. The spirit gonna convict those who have sinned. Anybody sin? Yes, 
Because the world said, all that have said, the world said, all that have said, and fall and shut of thy glory. Isn't that right? So therefore, amen, the spirit was needed because there were much sinners out there. I know I, I, you know, I was a sinner. Anybody was a sinner? I'm a sinner saved by grace. Saved by grace. So because I'm a sinner saved by grace, the grace of God yeah. keep me, it guides me. Come on, somebody. Through the storm and through the rain. Uh, I've made it over by the grace of God. His power, his Holy Spirit has kept me. Even though I was not all I needed to be, I was all I should be, the Spirit of God kept me. Anybody witness today that amen, it had to be the Spirit of God to keep me. Lest I hold you too long to come to a close here. Amen. Verse 27, verse 8, for the Father himself loveth you because ye have loved me. Yeah. Anybody love Jesus? Yeah. Anybody know what Jesus has done for you? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. And he says, because you love me, God the Father love you. And because you have believed that I came from God. Yes, sir. Uh huh. He said, I came forth from the Father, and I'm come into the world again. Uh huh. And he said that word, I come into the world again. I leave the world and I go to the Father. Yeah. Uh huh. I have some transitions that I have to do. Yeah. And let me tell you something, people, you got to do some transitioning yourself. Yes, sir. Amen. God has brought some of you from Louisiana. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Some from other states, yes, amen. Sir. To be here, God will transition you, but God will also keep you. God will transform your mind yes. that you're not what you used to be. Yes, sir. Come on, somebody. Hit yes, right. Sir. And so, therefore, I thank God that I'm not what I used to be, and I thank God that I'm better. Than I used to be. Anybody yeah. better than you used to be? Yeah. Uh huh. I don't think like I used to. Amen. I think better now. Ain't that right? Yeah. So therefore, his disciples still have a problem. Yeah. In other words, in verse Amen twenty nine, says, his disciples said to him, "Lo, thou speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things? Yes, uh huh. We sure that you know all things. We saw what you did." In healing the sick. Yeah. We saw what you did in causing the blind to see. Yeah. We saw how you prophesied, amen, what will happen and what will not happen. Yeah. We know that thou, that you are real in your situation. Yeah. And now are we sure that thou knowest all things that these is not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou came from God. Yeah. Uh -huh. Jesus. Jesus. Say you're talking mighty big right now. I don't know if you catch this little story right here, but you say, uh -huh, you're talking mighty big. It makes you sound like you got some confidence. You sound like you have some courage. Uh -huh, so he said, he said, do you now really believe? You know, he, he didn't put really there, but he said, now do you believe? In other words, do you really believe? Amen. So if you believe now, say, behold, the hour coming. Yeah, it's now come that you shall it'll be scattered every man to his own and shall leave me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. In other yeah, words, yeah. the time is coming now. You're going to take off running. Mm -hmm. They're going to be after you. They're going to take me. You're going to watch me. Amen. And it looks like I'm all alone because all those who said I'll be with you. Yeah. Amen. And look here. If you check out the enemy that already scattered a whole lot of us. Yes, sir. Some of us are locked up in our houses and don't want to go nowhere. Some of us, amen, can't go to work and don't want to go to work. Amen. Some of us can't go to doctor and don't want to go to doctor. Amen. They don't want to get caught up in the emergency room no yes, more. Sir. Amen. They got too many COVIDs in the emergency room. Somebody, amen, scared yeah. to go out. They're scared to travel. They're scared to go to the store. Amen. But let me tell you, God did not give us the spirit of fear. Yes, sir. He allowed us to have faith that, amen, whatever we need to do. Yes, sir. If you need food on your table, yes, sir. God has given you what you need yeah. to put food on your table. Yeah. Uh, if you need, amen, to go to the doctor, yeah. God says go to the doctor. Yeah. It's going to be all right. Me and Sister Cobra go all the time. And I share with you, you just take precautions. Yeah. If you're around somebody that had the COVID, amen, I was around Brother Bowman, I took another test. Yeah. I took one test. Anybody have taken a test? If you haven't taken a test, 
you there's something wrong with you. Yeah, yeah. Just because you feel good don't mean you don't take the test. Yeah. Amen. You ought to take the test because, amen, you will know what's going on. Let me tell you what I tell that, amen, those who have cancer, amen, some of them didn't know it until they went to the emergency room for something else. Yeah. And cancer was there. Yeah. Uh huh. You go to the doctor for something else, amen, and COVID may be there. Yeah. But I drop by to tell you, God. Yeah has made a way. Yeah. And I share with you, there are some numbers on the other side that say they have come out of the COVID, amen, situation. Yeah. God is still a healer. Yeah. Anybody believe God is a healer? Let me finish what I got here. It's getting good to me. I don't know if it's getting good to you. But it say, behold, the hour coming. And it is coming. In other words, amen, it's coming that every man shall be scattered. Isn't that right? Uh-huh, it looks like I'm all alone, but I'm with my father. But look at that, last verse. And I got four points to give you with this last verse. It says, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So point one of our closing point. It says, point one say the end uh, Christ aimed at. In other words, Christ aimed at. At a special end to the circumstance. He said, in him they might have peace. Uh -huh. In the end of your trial and tribulation, God said, I give you peace. Yeah. Amen. In his departure, amen, uh, it's good for him to go. Because if I go, you're going to have some peace. It's God's will that we have peace. In Christ only, amen, do we have peace. Through him, we have peace. Through him, we have joy. Through him, we have everlasting life. Anybody with me? So point one, amen, is the end of Christ's aim to give us peace. Point two, the entertainment. In other words, the world going to get us entertainment. The world going to be entertained by, amen, doing us in. They're going to, amen, do things to us. They say they're going to take you to prison. They're going to whip you, amen. They're going to do things to you. In other words, that's their entertainment. Men shall persecute you. Uh -huh. But the third point is encouragement. Christ gives us, amen. He said, be of good cheer. Even though they do you wrong, be of good cheer. In other words, lo, I'm with you. And the last point is, the grounds for that encouragement is, I have overcome. In other words, Jesus said, I have overcome. I've overcome the world. They whipped me all night long. Put a crown of thorns on my head. Yes, they put me in a bad situation. They beat me all night long. Walked me from judgment hall to judgment hall. Uh -huh. They put me on the cross. They nailed my hand. They ripped my feet. They pierced me in my side. Blood and water came streaming down. But amen, they put me in John Barber's tomb. And I stayed there all day Friday. And I stayed there all day Saturday. Early on the Thursday morning, I have overcome. I have overcome sickness. I have overcome persecution. I have overcome and I have joy. I have joy. Joy. Everlasting joy. Do you have joy? Do you want joy? It's in Jesus. This joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. Will you come? Will you come? Come to Jesus. Just as you are. Weary, wounded, and sad. And God said, I'll give you peace. God said, I'll give you joy. Will you come today? Do it right now while you're in your living room. In your kitchen.
accepted or rejected, come to Jesus while you still have time. God has brought a pandemic along with us to us that may wake us up, let us know that he is serious. But if you don't take him serious, he can do something else. Sometimes you say it can't get no worse than this. But I drop by to tell you, if we don't obey Jesus, it can get worse. The Pharaoh thought so. And I guarantee you, I know so. I don't know if you know him like I know him, but he's a jealous God. He don't want you loving nothing more than him. And if you love him, you can't get no more love than he can give. He give you all the love you need. To you and all your family. All you have to do is ask Jesus to come into your life right now. Say, Jesus, I want you to be Lord of my life. Save me. I'm lost. I don't know which way to go. I don't understand how to do it. But Lord, you show me the way. And God will show you the way. Go to a Bible teaching church. Now go to somebody that wants to give you, amen, Christ in your life. Accept it. Call them. Talk to them. one of your friends, your family. Call them and let them know that you want Jesus to be Lord of your life. Amen. Let us get ready for our offering. Pastor Joseph will come at this time to share with us on that. What a wonderful word from the Lord. Pray that you continue to pray for our pastor and the church. Pray that the word that goes forth out of his mouth will go where God sent it, will accomplish what he purposed, and it will not return unto him void. We are to the period of our time and our offering. Those of you that have not sent it through the mail, those of you who uh, possibly have not brought it by the church, we are able to give to the memo. Uh, those that are taking advantage of Venmo and sent in hours, but I also want to thank the Lord for uh, what he has done and is doing in our lives. I believe that you can't be God given. The psalmist says, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vow unto the Lord in the presence of all his people. Yes, Precious in the sight of the Lord and the death of his saints. Oh Lord, oh, Lord. truly I am a servant. I am a servant, the son of thine handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bone. Yes. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vow unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. And the Bible says when something, and I learned in Bible study methods that when something is repeated, it's usually done now because of emphasis. We want to come and give. Don't forget uh, how the different uh, things that we do, scholarship. I love to give the scholarship because I'm a recipient of scholarship, and I believe that somebody else should be blessed. Amen. Many of you went to school on scholarships. Uh, we also ask you to give. Remember to sow into the seed and our pastor as he does. Pastorship doesn't stop. We still have to do the thing for all. And our time is all. Yeah. And shall we get ready to press our shaking together? Yes. Oh, Many give into your book. <laughs> You can't be dark in the morning. Oh,
Father, we come in the name of Jesus. The one who suffered and died on the cross for our sin. The one who shared to remember him. And on this day, we remember you, Lord Jesus. Remember how you suffered. Remember how you blessed us, Lord. Remember the suffering of your body. How you suffered and died on the cross for our sin. How your body was sacrificed and how your blood was shared for this our sin. We ask today, Lord, that you forgive us for our sin. Strengthen us where we are weak. Bless those, Lord, even those that at home could not come out. Those who are on the streets, Lord, bless them. Those who are in the hospital, yes. bless them, Lord. And those who can't receive their supper, bless yes. them, Lord. Yes. Bless all that try to do it whatever way they can. Bless them, Lord. Most of all, bless the bread, bless the drink. Yes. Bless our bodies that we remember you. And all that we do, we give you the glory and praise. In Jesus' mighty name we say, Amen. Amen. share with the disciples. Just pray that somebody my body is torn for you, eat all of it. Just drink and share for Mr. Dawson's drink all of it. Thank you. 
Thank you for that. And that's the way to rejoice. Amen. We've done what the Lord said. Amen. Glad and excited about it. As we come to a close, share. Amen. Remember those who need prayer. And remember to be obedient. Wear your mask. Stay six feet apart. And obey the rules of our leaders. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in today.